So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Natasha Kinsel, and I'm delighted to moderate today's session. So sincere thanks for everyone to take the time out today, as we do know the busy schedules, particularly from the business perspective. This event is part of Local Enterprise Week, so the flow for the next hour, and I promise we will get you out within the hour, uh, will empower hopefully your business with the knowledge of how to future-proof your workforce through short, flexible and accredited courses on offer in Dublin. We're very grateful to be joined today as a partnering team, one of the game changer interventions within the skills ecosystem that is micro credentials. More for noting, this event will obviously, as you've heard, be recorded and distributed out to all of those attendees with your details being shared for the purposes of the microcreds project team. It will include further information and direct contacts, as well as the websites or any details referred to throughout this session, and as well, potential funding you might be able to avail of. We do encourage you to submit throughout the session, maybe questions or comments within the chat, which will be monitored. However, very conscious of the hour time frame to get people out by 1 p.m. sharp, our panel will focus on particular areas that businesses have already posed to us as questions. So we are happy to revert even after the event if there is any further questions that aren't answered, and indeed, should you wish to engage direct on potential skills solutions. Just a little context on our partnership of today as regional skills. We're here to support your upskilling needs as an impartial, independent free resource for your business. Regional Skills, my role in managing Dublin is an initiative of the Department of Further and Higher Education and very much bringing together the business and education partners at all levels in addressing your skills and talent needs. There is nine regional skills managers countrywide as a point of contact for you, the business. So while we will discuss and focus on Dublin that I manage, this is replicated around the country. It's important point maybe to remind as a start that businesses on this call, you actually pay into the National Training Fund as a tax for every employer or employee you have. But the question I often ask to the business is, one, are you aware? Or indeed, are you availing of any of the state funded provisions and gain that value back based on the needs your business might have. Most businesses I engage with are either not aware or potentially only link with part of the skills ecosystem. So what we want to do is make sure, particularly for the SMEs who represent 99% of the active businesses in Dublin alone, that you're aware and tapping into all the potential within the state funded skills ecosystem for supporting your ongoing journey as the business and world of work continues to evolve, so too indeed do your skills and talent needs. So today, that might be the start of a journey. We do as an add-on offer free skills audit for business in order to articulate with you what your skills needs actually are. And maybe that's the first point and call to action today. Rest assured, there's no forms to fill out, there's no cost to you, and it simply starts with a conversation to then consider the options of what that solution might look like. So before I introduce the panel today to showcase an enterprise who has directly benefited from engaging with micro threads, here is a short video of Dell's story. Thanks, David. I'm Timmy Odawar, um, Vice President of Global Services Supply Chain in Dell Technologies. I think the micro credentials program is fantastic. It could not have come at a better time. I think the challenge is not so much that the technology is coming at us and that we're trying to adapt. I think the challenge is more the pace um, and the velocity that we need to upskill and reskill. Um, and utilizing that technology to create use cases and micro credentials again allows that fast intensive 
education period of time to match the change that's happening in the industry. Reskilling and retooling is, is not a debate. It's not an option. I think people have to embrace it um, or they're not going to survive in a career orientated company. You know, development of content again with universities and the enterprise world like ourselves, I think it's critical for the success again from a student point of view. I think the more we do together, the more beneficial it is to our team members and to and to the universities. Talented people want to join companies that will extend their talent. So will extend their capability to learn. And that now is something we've certainly seen in the last couple of years as it can't be optional. It now needs to be, you know, the corporate companies like Dell, we need to be able to say to someone, look, we, we want you because you're so talented. And by the way, when you come in, you're going to progress that uh, learning and development, you know, from a professional point of view. And again, micro credentials is just fantastic that fits that portfolio in addition to other internal uh, training and development opportunities. Fantastic. Key message there, obviously, it, I suppose, enables, particularly for the SMEs, career development pathways. So to maybe get stuck in and continue that journey um, to impart to the businesses on the call today, that showcase from Dell and how they benefited, but businesses here on the call may have particular questions. So I'm delighted to be joined by our esteemed panel today. And I'll start with maybe Jules O'Connor, who is the Micro Credentials Project Lead with the Irish University Association. Then we have Marion O'Connor, Microcreds Project Lead at University College Dublin. We then have Fiona Gamble, the Microcreds Project Lead at Trinity College Dublin. And then we have Katrina Nigula Vickel, Microcreds Project Lead at Dublin City University. So to get straight stuck in now for the next part of the session with the panel, maybe Jules, I'll start with you if I may. Um, what is this game changer microcreds and how can it directly support business? Thanks so much for that, Natasha. And we're delighted to be here today to talk about micro-credentials. So micro-credentials, they're short skills-focused courses that are collaboratively designed with enterprise and business in mind. So they're targeted at people who are in the workplace and looking to upskill and reskill. We know how important it is to have a skilled workforce and to make sure that people in your company are kept up to date with the latest trends and developments within an industry or with a, within a professional area. So we believe that micro-credentials are a great way to um, upskill and, and reskill in a, in a short, sharp way. Our micro-credentials have the benefit of being university quality assured. And they're available at different levels, so from undergraduate through to master's level. So it's great to have that option to study at a different level. Also, in terms of the volume of learning, uh, we have different credit sizes from one to 30 credits. So that's great as well to be able to have that choice in terms of how much uh, learning you undertake. Uh, and we also cover a great different variety of skill sets. So from business management skills, such as strategy, finance, marketing, through to transversal skills, such as communication, uh, leadership, um, but we also cover um, more kind of creative and technical skills as well. So there's a really great breadth of different skills that our micro-credentials cover. And our focus um, really is on business and the needs of business. And micro-credentials are very much designed for this audience. Fantastic, Jules. I think, you know, one of the perceptions, if you like, that we get all the time from particularly SMEs who maybe haven't engaged with higher education institutes or universities, what maybe is the differential, that possible perception? Because for small SMEs, program costs and maybe time and the challenge of time that they're stretched with is, is a considering factor for them. Maybe give us a little bit about that. Yeah, we know that taking time out of work is uh, for study is, is very challenging, uh, particularly for small businesses. 
And we're often told by HR and, and learning development professionals that employees either just can't commit to the larger programs or when they do, they, they very often struggle to stay on the courses and, and complete them. Um, so we know that having the shorter, more focused courses are, are very desirable um, to em employers and employees. So our micro credentials, they're, they're short courses, they vary in duration. Um, they can go from, from four weeks to a year, but the vast majority of them are about 12 weeks in duration. Um, so it, it's a great kind of course length when you're looking at a particular uh, skill area. We also know that flexibility in study is very important. So our micro credentials are, are available um, online. Uh, some are hybrid, uh, some are blended, uh, and then there's some that are available face to face if they they do suit that um, more uh, in person type of skill set development. Um, so th there's a variety of different ways to learn as well, which we know is important for learners to make sure that they are learning in a way that suits um, them. Um, so we've thought about business needs uh, and how universities that are delivering micro credentials for learners who are in the workplace can ensure that they're providing access to skills that suit business needs. Perfect, Jules. So then I suppose with all those options, and as you say, at a point in time that suits both the learner as well as maybe the employer side, the key question from an employer's perspective, well, funding, what opportunity maybe is there for people or employers or certainly even learners to avail of under this project? It, it is. It, it comes up very often, uh, the, the funding question is, is obviously very, very important. So look, we, we have a, a large variety of courses um, available um, across the micro-credentials portfolio, uh, and they're, they're at different price points. Um, so, so there is already a variety there. Uh, we also already have um, quite a few funding options available. We work collaboratively with Skillnet. So some of our courses have fee reductions um, through that network. Um, in, a, in a very wide range of subject areas uh, from um, med tech to food production, financial services, aviation. So a really big range of courses that um, we deliver uh, collaboratively with uh, skill nets and have subsidies through skill nets. There's also funding available through um, Springboard Plus uh, and also some EU funding as well. Uh, it's also worth checking out uh, individual universities for any discounts they might have. Um, I know some uh, offer uh, subsidies for um, alumni so it's worth seeing if there are any of those available as well and we're always looking at um, our micro credentials and how we can make them available to a wider audience and, and we know that funding is just so important um, to making them available to a wider audience um, so we hope to be able to do more in this area um, soon uh, and we're hoping to be able to announce um, more about this shortly. Great, thanks, Jules, for that. I suppose uh, again, we have we have the privilege of having three direct contacts from the universities here in Dublin. So I'm going to move swiftly on to maybe target the three additional panel members, maybe getting into the nuts and bolts of how this works directly with each university in their respective, I suppose, organizations. And, and particularly around maybe the critical skills that we're seeing across our certainly our engagement with SMEs. So Katrina, maybe I'm going to come to you first. What's on offer maybe in the whole leadership side as we see this as critical skills that span many sectors, many business sizes, requiring that diverse range of skill sets maybe, What's there in, in terms of on offer directly in that area? Great. Thanks very much, Natasha. And uh, just to say, it's great to be here to, to share some of the work that we're doing in collaboration with industry to, to meet those skills gaps. But as you've rightly said, really what we're honing in on with my credentials is answering those needs that are in, in the market at the moment. So I suppose from a, a leadership perspective, you know, it is the, the buzzword at the moment, but a very, very important part of any business. And I suppose that the ability, what it does is, I suppose it gives that competitive edge to all businesses to have good leaders, not just good managers, but good leaders. Um, 
I'll also just at this point, I'll, I'll bring everybody's attention to microcreds.ie, uh, which we'll be talking to my, my colleagues from other universities will be will be referring to as well. But the, on that uh, platform, on that site, there is a list of all of the micro credentials that are available from university. So you will see when you put in different words and searches under different particular skills that are needed within um, SMEs. How do we know these things? Because of the absolute, the, the broad range of research that has been carried out, not only by um, higher education institutions, but also by um, by industry and that are feeding into by government, by Europe, what's coming down from the commission. So we know exactly what, what what's out there. We're, we're listening to we're listening to business and we're trying to to work with business to meet those needs. But from a DCU perspective, we're looking at um a series of, of micro-credentials in strategic le leadership. Um, and these are, are, are in areas like personal leadership, leadership and change. So everyone knows to be a leader is to, to be at the helm of, of change. So essentially it's to equip, to, 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 to give people who are in those positions time to step back, to look exactly what exactly do we need to, to equip ourselves and um, to understand what is needed with the, the vast change in um in Ireland in the workforce understanding all the different elements that that, that are are so important um for for people who are at the helm um I think as well as that we have definitely brought in a whole new element under understanding what transversal skills are and you know again another buzzword but essentially what was referred to as soft skills these are very very central to to leadership um to leadership micro credentials that are being built out and developed across all of the higher education institutions that are part of the microcreds project so again that's looking at areas of critical thinking creative thinking um it's communicative you know competencies all of those different elements that are then married with the academic side of it that supports it through all of the you know all of the research that's been carried out but also the challenges around intercultural um competencies as well that we understand um, to be to be not only just to to have enterprises within um within within Ireland, but outside of that, the international dimensions that are so important to a lot of our of our enterprises and businesses, whether they're small or medium sized, and um, so it's always having that edge and looking at. Uh, through transversal skills and uh, how they are embedded within the micro credential um, offerings that are, are available. So, as I said, we, we have ones in personal leadership, leadership and change. And um, we also, you know, we have micro credentials then that stack towards a particular um, a particular award or greater award. So we'd have a grad cert um, in strategic leadership. So these are all sort of um, there are micro credentials that stack towards an award, but as as Jules mentioned earlier, these are like bite sized pieces of learning that are now more um they're they're more realistic for people who are working at different at, at different levels so that they can actually say look I might not be able to take two years out to do X Y or Z I might already have a master's or I might already have a, you know a a particular quali an undergrad. Uh, undergrad qualification in a particular area. The whole idea about micro credential micro credentials is is that it's allowing it's allowing business to look at specific skills needs and gaps for their workforce and to say, look, we need this particular skill. We need you to be able to do X, Y, or Z. And from a from a leadership perspective, we definitely have um, listened, and we're we're looking at that. Um, we've also looked at specific areas, business areas, for example, aviation management um, and how that particular sector in Ireland has needed a lot of support post COVID, uh, but also looking at all of the sustainability issues that are around that as well and where leadership sits within that. So, again, th th there's a there's another um, there's another set of micro credentials there again that that stack uh, within DCU and our colleagues in 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 Trinity and UCD also have like a series of 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 micro credentials where leadership not only is just the the specific micro credential but it is embedded within other um other micro credentials because it is such a such a an important part of business and um, yeah. we don't just need managers we need people who can lead and can change.
Yeah, it's a valid point, Katrina. It spans across all spectrums. And certainly, as you mentioned, since COVID, given even remote working, it's a different way of managing and the leadership capability. I think just to move on, maybe Fiona, I'm going to hand this one to you. Another maybe real current focus that we're seeing um, in terms of even another additional mega trend, that evidence across business types, certainly given not alone the impacts of climate change, but also even the generation pipeline coming through, that they have an expectation now as an employer of choice. Maybe what's on offer there in that green sustainability area, whatever you want to call it, you know, there are capabilities required in those specific skill sets and new roles that are being developed. What's maybe there for businesses on the call today, Fiona? For sure. Uh, great. Thanks, Natasha. Uh, delighted to be here and tell you a little bit about uh, what we're doing at Trinity and also just with the broader microcreds partners. So um, there's a lot coming at us uh, at SMEs in this space in green and sustainability, for sure. Um, ESG reporting standards um, regulations are evolving fast, um, but also ESG is, is seen increasingly as a driver for innovation and impact and growth. So there's opportunities there as well as the more kind of regulatory side uh, with reporting and so on. Um, so there's a lot on, on SME leaders on their plate, right? So they've got fewer resources and, and often are more challenged for time. Um, so that's why I guess micro-credentials are a really ideal uh, place uh, for SMEs to, to start and learn about the green and sustainability space. So some of the things that uh, we cover, I guess, as, as a number of partners and through the microcreds.ie site, you can see everything that's available there. But we do have some kind of general courses for leaders and manage management really to help build that systematic awareness and understanding of the factors impacting enterprise. So also helping SMEs to identify opportunities to create value and embed strategies and policies throughout the organizations. And I think that's key. It's not a particular skill that today I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to look at environment and sustainability and ESG. This is something that we want SMEs. And as part of that whole green transition in initiative, it needs to be part of everyday business. So, for example, uh, one of the courses that we have in Trinity is called uh, Creating Value with ESG. So on that course, uh, you'll learn things like um, how to, to understanding societal impacts on organizations and their role in achieving ESG targets, for example. Um, you'll also develop the ability to build strategies and action plans in response to these challenges of organizations and critically uh, to develop expertise in analyzing theoretical as well as practical concepts in relation to creating value uh, with ESG. So within this uh, topic as well, and in this course, you'll, uh, you know, as well as integrating ethical, social, social, economic, ecological, legal, and political factors and all of the whole uh, in that remit, um, it's, it's really critical. And one of the, I guess, the key components of a course like this that Part of the assessment is indeed to create a plan that applies to your own business. So that talks to the impact. So um, there's a lot of wonderful longer courses out there for sure. There's, you know, MBAs and MBSs that are that longer commitment and do provide that deep, deep understanding for sure. These are shorter bursts, shorter pieces of learning that I can take back to my organization straight away and I can actually come back with a plan that I can start day one. So that's really, really uh, crucial. Um, just to give another example of, of a course that, that's coming on stream in semester one next year. Um, again, in Trinity, it's called uh, Climate Leadership Development. And this is about embedding the mindset and learning, I guess, for, for leaders and managers how to, um, how to lead, how to always think systematically about what uh, the impacts are for your organization. And just to lead downwards to kind of, um, I guess, cascade that mindset uh, through your teams. Um, so that's coming on stream in, in um, semester one. Um, then, so that's at a more general leadership level. Now there's a whole host of courses. And again, on microcreds.ie, if you search on all of the keywords, but we do a deep dive um, into some other topics. And, and before I actually even move on to those deep dive, we'd also have um, UCD also cover a very good course in terms of the um, 
uh, climate change uh, law and policy in UCD. So again, that uh, is a very practical course and can talk to a lot of the detail and some of those practical concerns that SMEs would have. In terms of a deeper dive then, so depending on where you are and what sector you're in, um, we have courses like uh, measuring environmental impact. So assessing the life cycle of your service delivery or your product development, looking at every stage where you can add value and where you can create an impact. We have a course on uh, low carbon power technology. Uh, DCU also have a course on decarbonization. Um, if you're in the food business, there's also a number of courses there under UCD on green care, environmental food processing and global food systems. So really, um, we cover a huge, um, you know, a huge range of topics there that, again, are all searchable by theme and topic on microcreds.ie. Um, we have a, a low carbon micro credential in Trinity as well. So really, the, the list is very long and varied uh, for sure. And I'm happy to take any, any further questions on those. Fantastic, Fiona. I think the key message here, too, is what you'd noted about that practical application, particularly for the SMEs, because they're shorter, quicker hits to bring something back to base. So I think another area, I'll just move on and maybe bring Marion in at this stage. Another area is certainly that we've lots of conversations with the SMEs in particular, because their journey is very different than the large multinationals where they sometimes don't know what they don't know or where to even start. So another area is maybe that whole area of transformational change, particularly digitalization. And maybe what's come and direct for them, Marion, that maybe can address this, of that journey that is quite different for SMEs. What's mm -hmm. there for them in, in digitalization? Yeah, I suppose uh, digitalization is a very broad area, obviously, and it covers uh, a huge spectrum uh, for, I suppose, uh, for institution for SMEs that want to um, to move their businesses and their processes online. Uh, we have a lot of courses, both from a, a managerial type perspective from the innovation and from the, uh, for example, in Maynooth um, University, there's a, a course on leading uh, uh, digital transformation. So if you're at the start of your journey, maybe that's some, somewhere you might like to start. Then moving on, perhaps um, if you're, you're thinking of maybe moving to uh, cloud computing, uh, that area of thing, DCU has a course in cloud. Um, Again, harnessing a lot of data and maybe uh, SMEs may have had manual processes and now want to move into a more data uh, driven kind of environment. We have a lot of courses across all of the institutions. And as Jules previously mentioned, these are delivered, uh, many of them online. So there's an opportunity to look uh, across Ireland at what's available in terms of data analytics. UCD has an introduction to data analytics, and we also have very specialized niche um, analytics and data science modules, as does Trinity has a very, uh, has a, an AI and data analytics course. And uh, for example, an introductory course on AI from University of Galway. So there's a lot out there from an introductory perspective, but there's also very advanced courses as well, where if you are in a in an area maybe as a startup and you're you're you are uh, uh, have a lot of technical knowledge, but you want to specify and you want to get into something niche, there are certainly very uh, focused courses on on lots of things uh, around robotics and AI and all of these uh, types of courses. So uh, I suppose. Uh, going back to Katrina's point about looking on the microcreds.ie website and uh, having a, a good look at what's out there and seeing does it match with how you want to learn and does it suit your learning style. So just really having a look at that. And also, I suppose if, you know, some uh, SMEs might be concerned about taking their business online, what are the challenges in terms of security, in terms of cyber risk? These are often uh, things that maybe they're not 100% sure about. What would possibly be the risks? What would the legal risks? So if you go on to microcreds.ie and search cyber, you'll come up with a number of courses across Ireland 
that cover um, the uh, cybersecurity and also uh, protecting your environment and, and networks, et cetera. So that's another aspect. Another thing I suppose would be uh, SMEs might like to take their business from a traditional maybe marketing uh, perspective and maybe want to move those online. Uh, Trinity College Dublin has a course on um, uh, digital marketing and um, maybe that's something that the SME would like to do. Again, uh, this type of transformation is not only a technical transformation, it's also a business transformation. And this business transformation, like Katrina said, you know, there's leadership courses uh, that are that would be very beneficial. There's also courses on innovation. Um, University of Limerick has a course on um, uh, change management and managing conflict. This is a big change process. You're introducing new systems and processes. So again, this is very much uh, a case of, of really understanding, I suppose, uh, your business and um, what you want to get out of, uh, what you want to do with your development and your training resources and how you like to learn. And really just going back to the microcreds.ie website, uh, have a look on there, see what, what would work for you and what the time commitment is as they're, they're short courses and many of them are online. And um, that's, I suppose, where your, your starting point is. Thank Brilliant, you. Marian. Thanks for that. Um, just I, I've, I've got a note there from David. Thanks, David, for highlighting just on the chat. One of the comments, and I'd say because I'm directly maybe specifically highlighting that the majority even on this call representing SMEs, but also obviously the multinationals micro credentials are there on offer for anyone, uh, whether you're an SME, a multinational or even a learner. But what I love about even the panel so far and the three, I mean, it's very much complementing each other. This is not about one is offering X, that you're fully aware of the brief on maybe the entire project of the seven universities. And it's very much aligned and complementing the offerings between each one. So maybe what I'll do is, is maybe go back to Jules, because... I think this is another area that that I certainly in my experience of dealing with the teams in, in across the, the seven universities and what they offer, it's really offering for either, again, SMEs or multinationals, Jules, where they're looking for that development pathways, the workforce development structure, if you like, how micro-credentials are aligning that to business where they really want to build the capacity internally within the learning and development space. And for maybe some organizations, they don't have that expertise in-house. Maybe what does this offering provide for them? Thanks, Natasha. So we do have lots of examples where our university partners are working very collaboratively with um, different organizations from SMEs through to multinationals. Um, and what they'll do is they will, um, as you say, sort of design pathways uh, using micro credentials that really meet the needs of their workforce developments. So they'll work with uh, whoever would be their designated contact point uh, within that organization, whether it's uh, a learning and development professional or a HR professional, or if it's an SME uh, working closely with those directly in the team um, to look at either what's currently available and on offer. Um, if it's something that is available that perhaps needs to be adapted to specific needs um, or potentially uh, new programs as well, if there is a, a cohort or several cohorts that could go through a, a new program. So this is something that uh, our university partners currently undertake. We have project leads in all seven of our university partners uh, and they're the, the best um, place really to start um, with having those conversations uh, and looking at your workforce development plans. Fantastic, Jules. And again, if, if there are other questions that the audience might like to pose, do, do pop it in the chat or even a comment, particularly, or if you have something to direct to one of the universities because of something they've already sent uh, or, or mentioned as part of, of the responses. I suppose a couple of questions that, that again, we tend to get, and, and some are related here in the chat from particular businesses, 
is and and these are our quick fireside ones really just to get to the nuts and bolts again um i might refer maybe back to fiona you might take this one generally how long are these courses to complete for either the the learner or if an employer is considering sending a current employee on generally what what time frame do they span OK, thanks, Natasha. Um, well, the goal, I think, across uh, across the projects really is to look at the profile of the le- of, of our learners for on micro credentials. So they're generally working um, often a stage of life where they have both family and work commitments. So that is is first and foremost um, the I guess that the they're generally short in duration. Um, from six weeks to 12 weeks. Um, We have a couple of micro credentials that run very intensively for one week every day. And then after that, it may be a one week session and some self-directed learning and come back in. There's a lot of variety there. Um, And we also use to, we also, uh, I guess, look to technology to support that. So virtual classrooms, uh, blended learning, self-directed online learning. So with, with, I guess, one of the the benefits of COVID is that that has jumped really kind of exponentially and that type of learning. Um, So often a micro-credential, from an employer's perspective, there is no no time out of work, uh, depending on what course they're doing. There are some that are run during the day. um, Mostly, I guess, they're quite flexible um, there are climate leadership course uh, runs um, every Wednesday evening from six to nine and on a Saturday uh, once a month um, in person or uh, or hybrid uh, online so they do uh, vary um, and they can also vary by cohort and sector um, we've also been known to to actually go to where there's a particular co- cohort we delivered um, a health micro credential um, on site in Cavan um, at one point in time. Great, Fiona. So location doesn't really matter either on occasions. On occasions. And again, yeah. you can look through um, what I would suggest. You can look through a course. So if you find a course in a particular topic that's uh, run on a Wednesday at 12 o'clock and it doesn't suit, look, there there may be something else in there is what, what I would say. Or if you're an employer and you have a cohort, there's a possibility that um, the the university could look at running it at another time if there is a cohort there. So, you know, I, I think flexibility, particularly we're at the early stages of this, we want to engage with with enterprise and understand what your needs are. Yeah, we, we might come back to that one, Fiona, definitely. Yeah. Um, I suppose the next one really, and, and maybe I'll direct this, Katrina, to yourself, this is, I suppose, a question where maybe we have an employer looking to sign up employees. Is there generally entry requirements for these courses? Yeah, Natasha, there would be. And again, it, it, it would be just to check with each of the universities and each of the micro credentials because it might vary. But usually there is a, there's a general standard on them where you might have a person who has an undergraduate a degree. So if you hold a degree and usually it's it's an honours degree that, that is required. But then there's also you can have an international qualification that is, you know, that is the equivalent of that, that will also be considered as well when you apply and also a work experience. So the, these are, you know, different areas that you could be asked for up to five years work experience, which would bring you up on par with uh, with an undergraduate degree. Again, for international candidates that are that are living in Ireland and um, their English language competency as well is also important. But again, once you know that there, there are ways and means and obviously understanding what the what the requirements are. Um, so it shouldn't be uh it shouldn't be a blocker at all. Um, there there there's a vast array of of requirements, and if you don't meet one, you might meet another. So your work experience might be the equivalent to the the qualifi- the undergraduate qualification. So it's very worth um people's miles to have a look and see what what that is. But uh, all universities will do their very best to cater for individuals who who wish to to upskill, and especially if it's something that there is. Um, within business, whatever that business is, if it is a priority and it falls under those skills gaps that have been um, set out by government, um, it's, it's, it's important for, for us all to be meeting that. So we'll work together on that. Yeah, I think that's important, Katrina. You mentioned the word, the blocker, that, that we see yeah. there is no blocker and shouldn't be a blocker 
for anyone, whether it be a learner or an employer to look and consider it is worthwhile. They might go onto the site and look at things and they might identify particular entry requirements. It's still worth a kind of contact direct conversation uh, with some of the universities, I think is really, really important. Um, so then it, maybe on that basis, Marion, I might come back to you because again, if it's the employer or learner, or maybe even the employer, how does the whole process work here? Um, you know, if it's an employer, for example, looking for a whole team, what, what, where do they start? What, what do they do to get people to apply for these provisions, particularly? Yeah, so um, on the microcred site, uh, across um, if when you go onto the microcred site and you're looking at a particular course, there will be links there to apply or to get more information. Um, in in UCDs, I suppose um, specific context, uh, what happens is the employee would uh, normally apply. Uh, they would, uh, you know, put in their their personal details. If they already have studied in UCD, it, they might look for you know information about their previous study that will pull up their previous records, uh, or you know just applying uh, as a, a new uh, entrant. Um, so the application process is then done, and we make an offer, and then the student um, you know will will pay their fees. The employer can also pay their fees. Um, that can be done by, uh, you know, there's a, a third party um, link and all you need is basically the student's application ID and maybe the PPS number. And uh, the employer can then go in and make the payment on, on the employee's behalf. Uh, so that's an option as well. Uh, so I suppose that's how it really works. Uh, and then once the, the individual has an offer, we'll start communicating them with them about start and, and how to access our online systems, etc. So that's really how it how it works um, from a, a UCD perspective. But all of the, the universities are taking their own applications, so they have slightly different um, approaches, perhaps. So I would check with the uh, with the relevant university. OK, great. Ryan. So again, the option, while you might find some pieces on the website to actually get the link direct and, and further delve into options. I suppose based on the options, maybe Katrina, I might come back to you for this one around the whole employer engagement piece, how does the, the university ensure that these programs, because very often, you know, it's not about for the employer, maybe what level it's at, it's, it's more, if, if my employee goes on a particular program, how can I ensure that the skill set I want them to have in their role is ensured through delivery of this program. So how does the university ensure these meet those specific needs and, and that's tailored for business? Um, well, eventually, uh, Natasha, the micro-credentials are, are, are linked intrinsically with industry and uh, with, I suppose, working with industry, industry to meet skills gaps that have been called out. Um, by government, by all of the research that's uh, you know being um, undergone by the IDA, by IBEC, um, universities themselves. So what we're looking at is a really strategic piece of learning, um, essentially that has been spearheaded um, by Ireland actually in the, in this particular sector in micro credentials. It's a it's a, an EU wide phenomenon now, but um, you know it's, it's also something that we should be very proud of. But essentially within industry. And um, within all of the universities, there are there are um, engagement forums with industry that inform all of the all of the learning that's going on and um, within micro credentials. So we're listening very specifically to industry as to what the needs are. But we're also within our own, I suppose, spheres with the research that's been done, it kind of it, it's a it's work in tandem, really. That. Um, I think what's really important as well, as I said earlier, is just that the research that's been done by the IDA, we fantastic, um, you know, uh, agencies in this in this country, and um, that inform what we're doing, and and I think it's really listening to them. This particular year, being a, you know a skills focused year within the European Union, has really brought home 
the the necessity for us all to 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 really listen to one another and work together. Um, but essentially that's that's what's been done within the within universities within the higher education institute sector. Um, so all of our our micro credentials are coming from those particular areas. Um, and again. As, as my colleagues have referred to, if there are sp particular or specific skills gaps that are relevant for a specific company um, based on scale, et cetera, um, conversations can be had with institutions around, well, look, we see this as something that's going to be, you know, maybe a, a skill that we need to address. There is going to be a particular cohort. Th those types of conversations we're also engaging in um, as higher education institutions now. Um, not saying that it always is something that can be realised, but definitely um, it is something that's on the table now. Um, but anything that is on microcreds.ie, um, you can bet your bottom dollar that there has been and uh, there has been engagement with industry and through the microcreds project as well, the national project and uh, that's been led out by the IUA umbrella body for all of, of the, the traditional universities in in Ireland. Um, there is an, an innovation microcreds innovate uh, forum. So again, with that and also the the you know the enterprise engagement forum that that feeds into our project, this national project, um, we're getting really, really rich information from all different sectors. Um, as to what the needs are. So we're we're really trying <laughs> to meet yeah. those needs. Uh, absolutely, Katrina, and it's a lot of things that come out even f at, a, at a granular level, even from skills audits that we conduct, that it's very much targeted at specific needs that have been highlighted. I suppose based on that, and, and maybe Fiona, I might come back to you. Let's say, I mean, we're, we're advising, you know, those businesses on the call today. First point to call is maybe to, to have a look at, at the list. But what if I don't see something on the list? What what may be, and I have a specific need, how can maybe that be addressed? Uh, well, for, well, first off, uh, Natasha, I would just consider looking at all of the, the, the kind of um, search terms. So terminology is changing all the time and you may be looking up um, you know, low carbon, but it may be under something else slightly different. So I would consider first maybe just looking through themes and so on, just to see if it's if it's there. It's also possible that there may be a course in development that isn't yet on the site, but could be, for example, due for semester one next year. So that's where it would be very important if you don't see anything um reach out because a it could be part of another course and it could be there there's a lot there at the moment so we're there to help and decipher and, and uh, determine what's there but there's often something coming downstream that just isn't available yet so that would be useful information for you to know if there's absolutely nothing that you can see there we're also as as everybody's echoing here on the call today if there's a defined and required need for something, then it's an area the universities will be delighted to collaborate with you on and, and look into that. And if there's expertise in a particular university in that area, they may very well um, work with you on this and look for, you know, and look to collaborate further. It's okay. early, early days. We're open. We're very open. I, I, and I think that's the point, Fiona. A lot of things are evolving over time. Um, I, I think one other element, and, and maybe Marion, you might address this one, is, you know, both the panel members have mentioned about this conversation and, and getting in touch where something has been identified of a particular need for a company. I suppose the question we always get is, let's say we're talking to multinationals, you know, who have cohorts uh, of individuals, great. Uh, they may have a full cohort to delve into something that's granular and specifically tailored for them. Mm -hmm. But what about the SME? The SME who might have one to nine or an SME medium size might have 10 to 50 or 50 to 250. Mm -hmm. How many generally for a specific need they've identified, been realistic about it to develop something new and tailored how many employees maybe would they have to consider before they come to university to say, look, we want this developed just for us? Yeah, Natasha, that's a quite a, I suppose it's a, a very challenging question because different courses require different uh, 
different, I suppose, uh, resources and different, um, they might require labs or they might require, you know, something that is constrained in terms of the numbers that we can fit in that particular course. So it's a very much a conversation that we would have to have with the employer and maybe to understand, obviously, we can't do a, a, a bespoke course for, you know, a small cohort like five or six, but we could do it perhaps if there was a, an industry body or a cohort that we have enough people. Uh, but again, we have to really understand what the constraints are in terms of uh, the program itself and uh, if there are, you know, learning requirements, if there's peer learning, uh, for example, um, I had a, a course there recently in, in veterinary, and that was for uh, veterinary practitioners. Um, but because the the uh, veterinary practitioners uh, need, you know, need peer to peer learning, there needs to be uh, demonstrations, and there needs to be all of these types of things the cohort actually was quite small and it only was like 12 to 14 was all that we could accommodate. So it really is a conversation that has to be had around the business and around the need and the learning that has to take place. Uh, you know, if it's if, if the learning is applied learning, you know, where is it going to take place and, you know, what facilities you need. So it's a very much it's not a question I can just answer off the top of my head. It has to have further uh, further analysis and discussion with the academic and the and the industry itself. Yeah, that's great, Mary. And I think the upshot is is look, it, it, it's it's been realistic, but also it's an option. And and again, to connect in to have that conversation, and that'll delve into each particular university, maybe on how they might be able to deal with it. And I think that's great on the basis of the project as well, because maybe you know on the basis of all seven universities that one might have particular experts or have off the shelf that can be tailored already that might suit in a quicker time frame so that's good that that all those links are there and mutually aligned um i'm conscious of time now and there are a couple of questions i might come back to jules before we kind of start finishing up the broader stroke of, of where the journey goes from here and what has to happen from here and those lovely call to actions I always finish on, uh, which I think is important after today. Just a, a couple of things I see on the chat here. For courses, Jules, that are fully online, will there be access to university libraries, people are asking? I think that's maybe important for some who want access to that, those resources. Is that something you can answer? It, it does vary depending on, on the university. Uh, I know some of them do provide that type of access. It depends, I guess, on the on the course and the requirements of the course. Um, but it's worth checking when you're signing up um, what exactly you get access to in terms of uh, campus resources and facilities. But that is certainly something um, that some of the university partners do offer access to the library um, as part of that as well. OK, fantastic. And then there's another one here. How does it work for people wanting to get a degree in a chosen area if they have experience and other courses completed, but not to degree level? I know Katrina referenced some of this about that experience piece. Maybe, Jules, what maybe journeys have you seen already for individuals maybe who don't traditionally have a degree? What's the options there? Yeah, so, so there's various things that, that you can look at doing. Um, you can go through the, the recognition of prior learning route. Um, and, and look at different pathways um, to get some of the qualifications um, or awards that are recognized. Um, certainly with micro-credentials, we're looking at um, how we stack um, different courses at the moment. So we stack them into larger awards, um, perhaps professional certificates or, or diplomas. Um, but I think at the moment, probably looking at something like a recognition of prior learning would be great if you're looking for a, for a larger award. Uh, and we do hope to have more available soon um, on stacking. Some of our university partners will have that um, within um, their current portfolio. I know Katrina mentioned at DCU, they've got a great range of uh, courses that stack together, as do other university partners as well. Um, so it's worth taking a look at um, what course you're looking at, and then if you can stack that into a larger award as well. 
Fantastic, Jules. That's great. One before I, I pose the final one, Jules, for you to, to finish off, there is one other question there just to address. And it comes back to the, the point I made at the start about time and funding. There's always a question on the funding, maybe. Um, and, and we might try and, and almost finish up with one final one after this. So there's no information on the funding options on the micro credentials website. Somebody's eager beaver, so they've already got onto the site, which is fantastic. They're ahead of the game. Can maybe, Jules, you give us information on, on where the business can get that funding piece? Uh, and I, it, you know, it, I know we'll follow up after the call, obviously, with maybe other details, but maybe highlight a little bit about that. Does the employer still pay for the course? if they're signing up an employee and how do they access that funding or what way does that work? So in terms of the, the website uh, and the funding information, so at the moment, uh, if there is funding available, for example, through a collaboration with uh, Skillnet, uh, when you go onto the actual course itself, it'll tell you if it is um, produced in collaboration with Skillnet. So you need to go onto the course itself to have a look at that and see about funding options available. We are working on the functionality of the website uh, and we're hoping to uh, launch some new functionality and um, perhaps towards the end of this week that will be able to show you courses um, that have specific funding attached. Um, perhaps it, when we send around information after the call, we can share some more information of that uh, and links to it uh, when, when that comes out. So that will provide more information. Um, so it depends really on, on the funding uh, route in terms of what a particular employer will pay. Um, a lot of the funding options that we are, are looking at into the future, the amounts um, would be perhaps um, the, the employee would kind of pay us that amount um, to the university. Um, so it would hopefully be streamlined as possible. Great, Jules. So it, again, I suppose just to reiterate that journey, because it's a different journey for everybody, whether it's a learner or the employer. So just to finish off, is it the advice, Jules, here that the first point to call is maybe they go to the site, but then obviously you have the seven universities. So what does that journey maybe look like that your best advice for them after the call today to look at or consider? So I, I would take a look at microcreds.ie, have a look at the courses that are available, the information on microcredentials, further information on all of our partner universities. Um, you'll be able to have a look at uh, not only the courses, but the skills that you can learn. Um, it's also where we'll make any upcoming announcements that might be of interest and you can find out about any new courses as well. Um, as various colleagues have mentioned, if, if there isn't anything there at the moment that is what you're looking for, but you want to see perhaps what's in development, uh, or if you have a cohort um, in mind uh, for a particular course, um, do go to the Contact Us page um, and you can get in touch either directly with one of our university partners, one of our project leads, um, or you can get in touch with us uh, centrally at the IUA. Fantastic. I think that's important, particularly for, for the business. They'll, they'll go onto the site, but it's great to know that there's a direct point of contact. And equally to remind them that it doesn't really matter whether you're a business located in Dublin or a business I know some are on the call that are outside Dublin, that there's there's an option there and, and each of the contacts can link in to other potential offerings if they're not offering one over another. Uh, so it's quite aligned. Um, I, I was particularly interested because the video that, that David showed at the start there from Dell, um, there's a number of other videos, Jill, that might, Jules, that might be posted because I think that's a business to business kind of, if they can see those stories and case studies, that's quite important for the business. So will those be, be maybe put up on the site or where can they access those over the coming days and weeks? Yeah, absolutely. We are looking at those videos um, for, for, for all the different university partners um, and they will be available on the website. Um, we'll also be posting them on social media too. So you can hear more case studies, uh, see more examples of what other organizations are doing and how they're benefiting um, from micro-credentials. Fantastic. So 12.59 on my clock. My goodness, thank you so much to all the panel members who, to be fair, succinctly responded to hopefully a lot of the questions that I know businesses have and certainly I've had. But I suppose to finish, uh, my call to action is, well, I want to look at what course and micro credentials course I'm going to sign up to. This is still the year of skills. Every day is a learning day. So I'd say 
a call to action to everyone on the call. Uh, what, what course are you going to sign up to over the next couple of weeks and months? But certainly give us a call, contact the panel members if there's something that's there that you don't necessarily see to have that conversation. But I'd sincerely like to thank you for joining this event today. Thanks to Dublin City uh, Local Enterprise Office as part of the Leo Enterprise Week. And sincerely in the background, all of the groundwork in advance of today and the following details that are going to go out. Thanks to Emma and David also on the call in the background. They're sorting out all our Zoom technical stuff. So as, as you finish on this call, you might be prompted to complete two particular questions of interest for you if you'd like to link with us directly. But as I said, we will do a follow up with the recording. Further details, as the panel have mentioned, about the site and further details about potential funding. So on that note, I'd like to wish you uh, the best for the rest of the day. And hopefully now we're sitting at lunchtime that you can go off, digest all that lovely information over lunch. And uh, certainly we welcome the opportunity to further engage with you from here. And thank you very much for attending and your attention for today. Thank you.